Hello everybody and welcome back to the KCM. I know it's been a while. We had a brief hiatus last week. I guess there was some construction going on in the studio, but here we are in week six. And you know it's going to be a good one. Because look at this lineup. Got a ton of fantastic players here. Should be an awesome week. Jun. Really looking forward to this. Nice. Yeah, I've been a little bit of a hiatus, uh, one extra week of downtime before finally able to get back into the action. Uh, looking at the lineup, um, no sulky, it seems. But uh, this is looking pretty scary from all full three squads, though. Royal Sharp Barracks is a pretty fierce lineup, and then best mini Bisu. Can't really get much better than that, and Hero Jadong action. Yeah, that's not far from being one of the better squads that Zerg can also field. So this is pretty stellar across the board, it seems. Yeah, Rain is missing, but Rain is, is never uh, joining the KCM anyway. I think he's got more lucrative things to do uh, when it comes to streaming. Uh, and we don't have Snow as well, but this is a very, very good lineup. I'm especially excited to see Sharp play. We're starting out here with Barracks, though, in the bottom left-hand corner. Best is in that bottom right. Kickback has given us some very interesting matches, but what do you think of PVT on this map? Yeah, I'm not too sure about PVT on this map, honestly. Uh, I feel like there's a lot more issues that Protoss have to contend with, especially with how fast this um, second and third become mined out. You've got 1,200 minerals and uh, only like 3,000 gas, so... I don't think you can kind of get those mid to late games set up so easily as that Protoss want to with their like fast fourth in fourth into fifth base and uh, you haven't got this same kind of macro engine that you would usually have if you're forced to expand more aggressively. Uh, equally though, with the, the Terran kind of being contained on this quadrant, there is no easy fourth base to secure. So I imagine we will see some kind of timing push out of the Terran player to both attack and defend simultaneously and secure a fourth base uh, in the mid game. Um, I'm not too sure how he's going to accomplish that against the likes of best. Um, his best is extremely adept at building up a massive, powerful Mantos kind of style army, just designed to bowl over and break even the most impregnable of Terran setups. So I'm not quite sure if uh, Barracks is ever going to get a fourth base here, but I think that's the main issue on this map is the, the fourth base timing for Terran and the late game setup for Protoss not being as easy to navigate. This is a little unfortunate for Best. He's built a Zealot in the early game and he's up against a wall. The the unlucky oh wow hey there we go hop in the zealot over with the probe that was a very nice move I didn't I didn't even think about that it didn't even cross my mind Shin, that you could do that but I guess yeah of course you can try to hop the zealot over and he does it on the first try right before the marine pops out if if he fails that even one time we're gonna have the marine hitting the probe and then that pushes over but there we go wow. another one gets over immediately wow twice in that's a not row easy to do no it's, yeah, not, it's not easy, easy to do when, especially when you're under pressure like this a uh, pretty good effort from barracks here trying to utilize the sevs to create some distance between these um it's ellis but it doesn't really matter i mean Bess is doing a great job of just uh, cy um, circumnavigating around those and getting a lot of damage onto these marines barracks is desperately trying to keep these marines safe he's just barely able to do so but a lot of scvs losing mining time time here and that's a not much income to speak of for uh barracks right now this is a big big economic lead in the early game for best now despite not getting critical damage to the marines like he initially wanted yeah this is a big slowdown it's not going to end the game but it's definitely giving an advantage and oh barracks he does not want to play this one out after taking that much damage he decides to throw down another factory in the middle of the map two fact play has been coming back into style, Shun. Yeah. You've seen it a lot more recently. It felt like a solved build. It seemed like Terran players just couldn't utilize it anymore, but it is making a comeback. It is be becoming more uh, viable in the most recent meta. 
um, it's with varied success, but I think it could really surprise best. This is a map there where you expect the Terran to be bunkering down on three bases. You don't expect them to be going for two factory, and especially not two right. factory with one on the map. Yeah, I mean, he's not even set up to, like, sim city this wall in um, right now, so it may, it'll be extremely easy for him to get these units into the main base of best. Uh, this is going to be a little bit awkward. One thing going for uh, best is that a lot of these marines have already been softened up, so they won't be tanking as many shots as usual, but it doesn't really matter. This could be a lot of damage coming out from barracks here in just a second. Um, SEV even going to get in and see the good news that there's still just one gateway worth of production right now. These other two gateways are going to take a long time before they kick in, so this two to, two to one advantage of having these two factories to just one gateway of best will give a little bit of a pressure window available now for the Terran to exploit. Just one tank and a few vultures and a handful of marines might be enough to gun down these two goons with the third goon just popping out now. He's got to go quickly because three more goons are going to pop soon. It's going to be at six, which is way more than he can handle. So he's going to run right in here, throw down mines on top of these gateways. As these next few goons start to pop out, if they hit uh, mines and get killed off, I mean, he could snowball this. However, he is losing a lot of these marines. Uh, almost all of them are gone. None of the dragoons have fallen so far. There's the first kill, a second kill, and this last goon could run forward into a mine. Let's see if he drags the mine or not. Oh, great mine connection there, but the tank goes down. Vultures just sprinting in. Another tank arrives. I wasn't expecting the second tank, but there it is. Hits that last dragoon. This is getting out of control here. Bess is losing so many probes. He's pulled them off the line to try and deal with this tank, but there's still uh, a bunch of mines here okay there we go we have the observer at least tank is surrounded by probes but i don't think it's going to be enough to kill it vulture is coming in to assist and that one last tank is going to go down most likely but there's another mine going off oh it gets picked off just before four kills five kills on this marine oh man the marine has done so much and you know yeah, what this is critical damage yeah barracks well has done it I mean, it, it, the barracks would definitely have done it had he not lost the vulture in the natural expansion. Best did a good job of killing off the vulture with a probe, so he didn't lose too many probes in his natural expansion. If he can somehow not lose any more additional probes, oh, he needs to be careful with these spider mines all over the place. Yeah, he's got two nexus to just the one command center, so if he can just avoid losing any more probes, he'd be in a great position to kind of restabilize. But barracks has done so much damage to his economy. That that one marine just getting five kills total and so many more additional probes going down now even oh that huge mine hit gets another dragoon and a couple more so many probes are dead this now might be insurmountable damage to the economy of best now for him to recover even though he's able to make two workers at a time for this for this moment it doesn't really matter if he's lost too many probes and the command center is now catching up for barracks it brings him back into the game again I'm not quite sure if this is the, the correct vernacular, but I believe this is something called Whirlwind Terran. It's where you kind of get the advantage. You start to throw the Protoss player off balance, and then you just keep throwing vultures in to all the bases and pressuring and pressuring, and they just can't quite get their footing. They can't quite stop you from killing more and more probes, but it seems like the winds have subsided and barracks wants to expand he's taking double expansion uh, behind this and trying to propel his macro forward off of that damage he's going to try and get more ahead let's see if he can survive best counterplay yeah it's going to be a little bit of time before best uh, i think will be super comfortable moving out he's going to just uh, try and stabilize his economy right now get this third nexus going but look barracks is not like shying away he's also powering up he's got his third cc uh, already in route to uh, being a problem for best have to formulate uh, a solution for later on i don't really see many counterplay options open for best especially if he's not going to be getting any shuttles right now i, th I think he may just try to be identify what even uh, is the range of play available to barracks with these initial two observers and then he's going to be making some critical decisions is he going to be going into uh, just reeve attack to slow down any kind of push timings from barracks here so he can get his own economy off the ground or is he going to go be for some very fast tech play to see if he can try and find an opening to punish at barracks which i don't think is going to be uh, an option here i think he's going to have to try and play a straight up game and hope for the best 
It feels like Barracks has too much time. He's going to get a full turret, turret ring up. I don't think there's a window to punish. I wonder if Bess... A uh, good bet would be for best to just take a base in top right. Just start taking more expansions and uh, propelling his macro ahead. You know, Barracks doesn't have a high factory count. And there's going to be quite some time before he's ready to push either. So maybe just taking more bases, getting an economic lead over this three base Terran. You know, these don't last for very long. So if you could take a base uh, up in top right, you know, secure another main... Uh, that's right. going to last a lot longer, and maybe you can weather the storm. Maybe you can uh, grind down barracks uh, until his kind of economy f flounders and these mineral fields run out. He's going to be going up to four factories, so it kind of gives me the impression he wants to do some kind of timing attack, or he's going to need these kind of factories to even think about securing a fourth base, despite already being in a good position. Uh, we see the Citadel coming down from um, Best already, which uh, may be a sign that he's worried about a push coming out from Barracks, and he knows that uh, he needs these legs uh, online for his Zealots as soon as possible, so he doesn't just get bowled over. Well, here comes the Reaver, taking a look at the third base for Barracks. He sees that it's probably not a good idea to fly in there. He would end up losing the shuttle, and if there was a push coming immediately uh, without the shuttle and Reaver, he would likely just perish. Best is getting ready to take a base in the center right. It's not the base I was expecting, but it will provide him some uh, additional income that will allow him to mine slightly more than the Terran player, and that's always a, a huge requirement for this matchup. You have to be mining more, and Best hasn't been mining more than Barracks for quite some time. It's just been even yeah. uh, worker count, most likely, even uh, supply, and now Barracks actually slipping ahead. Uh, 10 supply. It's very, very scary. I think Barracks is. Uh, barring any very large mistake or poor engagement, should be able to take this game if he just plays it out perfectly. Right, yeah, I mean... <sighs> I, I, Best is going to need some pretty good Reaver Micro and will need to slow down this push quite significantly. He's got quite a lot of gateways online and he, he has got his um, Citadel out prematurely to make sure his uh, leg enhancements are online a touch earlier than maybe they would usually be so he doesn't just die outright to the push of Barracks. But it's still a very scary push to deal with. He's going to have to make these siege tanks uh, siege over and over again several times just to buy enough rounds of Macro to even have an army available to start to combat this, much less actually could defeat it. Ooh, great shot there. Excellent, excellent job. I don't typically think of Best as being the most uh, charismatic. I want to say charismatic, but that's not the right word. Uh, you know, the best player with the Reaver, but he's doing a good job so far slowing this down. I think more of best is just the the giant masses of units and you know perfect uh, macro to overwhelm the Terran player and he's not going to have that this game so he's really relying on these uh, vulture uh, reaver engagements to to pick off a lot of this uh, bulk from the Terran army and slow it down enough so that the zealots can overwhelm every, everything and he's actually reduced the, the vulture count by a lot and as the, vul the zealots come in where are all the vultures they're sitting in the rally point and the, the zealots just get right on top of this dude Shun. what oh, no. happened to barracks he's just falling apart yeah. Oh, this is like every Terran player's like nightmare. They, they 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 get into good positions. They do one critical error with the move out, and it all just goes down the drain. And Best is just like wrapping his gorilla arms around him and taking advantage of that tiny little mistake and over uh, reach from barracks. And pretty much all the entire t tank count is now reset. I think there was like one or two tanks left now. He has got quite a few uh, vultures still rallied across, so maybe he can get on top of the rally point of Best right now. Start laying down mines 
contains before more additional units can get out of this choke. Maybe he can start to set up a contain here and start to get some pressure going on best. There's some some window for punish still available to him, but not many tanks left in the arsenal. It's going to be much more difficult to get this contain going already. Best trying to sh do a good job of shutting down many of these attempts at contain by cleaning out the mines and killing one of these tanks, trying to shuffle on down to the western side of the southern flank. Now getting both of these siege tanks, it looks like. I don't think the contain is going to be too successful for a while. So many dragoons popping out this massive gateway count and dude it is a tear nightmare just sending in the the tanks these bleeding tanks over and over and over again towards this natural losing them one by one by one now and his tank count is still at about two to three no four total this is brutal barracks has kind of thrown this lead asunder and he's got 1300 gas in the bank maybe time to add on another uh, machine shop and start utilizing that gas he's trying to take a base in the center left we'll see if he can get away with that i think that best uh, has very much taken the lead in this game and uh, it's a sad thing to see because barracks had so much so much going for him in this game and he's just completely thrown it out the window it's it, it really yeah. is again like you said the terran condition so many terran players will do stuff like this it was the bleeding of the the vultures into the uh, reavers and then not reinforcing the tanks with more vultures in time before the zealots arrived and right that's just overwhelming a, a superior uh, supply count with just a little bit of finesse it's uh impressive to see yeah. Yeah, no, this is like even worse than it would usually be because like the onus is kind of on barracks to expand. He's going to be mined out way quicker than usual. Like he's almost mined out on all three of these bases, whereas Bess is at the, at the very least has got this fourth base to a um, surplus for a little while. So yeah, like this is a really rough situation for barracks. We need a fourth base and it's a light year of distance to cover to get there and a lot of positions to exploit for uh, Best along the way. So this is a really rough position position for barracks we built up a pretty sizable force now but now this is a force that we'll probably have to use to slowly get out onto the map to expand rather than attack here so if this was a regular game shun and i was looking at this 169 supply to 149 that's not bad at all for yeah, a terran this player is okay. but yeah. we had a, a supply lead before and we managed to throw it away oh this dropship goes down too that's so Ooh. brutal and that's rough so i'm i'm just i don't even though the supply is close i don't feel a lot of confidence that barracks can just overwhelm and and beat best in a straight up engagement because best has already shown he's completely capable of taking these fights and now he has uh, storm as well oh he didn't uh, close this up and he doesn't have a nexus in top right so that's a pretty big pain in the butt for best He's going to have to send yeah. some dragons over here to deal with this. He can't take a fifth just yet, uh, which is great for Barracks. But Barracks, yeah, he really needs that that fourth base. Yeah, he's kind of pinned down for now, unfortunately. Like, he knows that if he makes one small misstep, the whole game's over. He's got one chance at securing this fourth base. So he's going to just build up as much of an army as he can. It's like 165, 170 seems to be the go time for him. Start moving out towards this 9 o'clock position so he can start to get a fourth base online. If he can somehow secure it, it's going to be great. But Bess is going to do everything in his potential to slow this down and maybe look for a moment of weakness to exploit by running in and picking off tanks as well. But I don't think he's going to be successful at bowling over this army quite as easily as he did before. I mean, I say that so many times when I look at these positions that somehow Best does seem to like, kill armies that he shouldn't. It's got to be careful walking over your own mines. Barrack's going to turn around as soon as he sees the army coming up to meet him. He moves farther northward and going to set up just outside of range of these reavers this is a scary moment here for barracks best can dive in at any moment but right now the army is kind of tucked behind this wall on the right hand side and it's not an easy engagement to take so best is going to wait until uh, he is completely maxed he is now maxed and the army is slightly out of position slightly in a more open area where he can push through. There are walls on this map. Oh, great D-Matrix there. Dealing with the 
Scarab shot. He did take a lot of damage from that, however. Uh, on some yeah. of these tanks, a lot of them are softened up. And he still can't put down this CC. So, uh, Bess has done a great job delaying this. He slowed it down so much. Oh, and he's going to get a tank as well. Very annoying stuff. Finally, I yeah. think, going to push this out. But it's it's just been so long. Yeah, it seems like Bess is doing a lot better at uh, this element of his gameplay than he would usually. Much much better at getting some control over the game with a little bit of finesse using utilizing the Reaver tools. Now going to be coming on the southern threshold and just clearing out all of these mines as quickly as possible while all these tanks are out of position. This is one of the biggest issues of Terran mech is that it's hard to keep your army fluid. They've got to move around, siege, unsiege, and move back into position. Very easy to keep like pulling the Terran to and fro and exploiting that positional weakness of Terran and uh, never really engaging them head on, just finding uh, you know ways to skirmish with them on the periphery and also coming into these pockets of expansions when they're weak. He's looking for those opportunities over at the natural, once again going to start to push forward, but just a couple of tanks on the high ground uh, to the south of this position would be enough to slow this down significantly, eating a lot of mines, dropping up the storms though and taking his chunk of meat this chunk of flesh out of this Terran army, dropping that supply down to 130, but Barracks feels confident now that the storms have been spent to start to push forward against this. He's also going to come in with this Reaver. Oh, eight kills on that Reaver. I'm not sure if those are all SCVs, but that was a lot of damage. Nine kills now as the tank goes down. Barracks is going to lose potentially even more SCVs if this slug it make its way down to this mineral line. It seems like he's not paying attention to that just yet. And there is a mine to the left of this. So maybe that gets picked off here in a second. But trading against vultures is always fantastic. He does get one more, but loses that reaver. The harassment no. is over, but the damage was done. Yeah, really impressive, especially getting the reaver right on top of the mineral line to make sure that it glitches over. For the Look at that beautiful chunky storm, though. Wow, that's like six siege tanks in one siding storm. Huge storms absolutely obliterating the tank line for barracks. There's nothing left in the tank now. All the gas has been spent, both metaphorically and literally now. Even though he's got 3,000, like, he's not going to be really mining. He's got one base worth of minerals and 3,000 gas. He's going to have to make a lot of machine shops to replace those tank counts holy that was so many tanks dying in just such a short span of time wow there it is gg yeah best just skill checking barracks over and over again okay move back to your fourth now move back to your natural now move back to your fourth now move back to your natural no. And then, oh, you brought all of your tanks together and you siege them on top of each other. And here's my my shuttles. There we go. Drop on top yep. of everything. You're not spread one time and the game is just completely over. Beautifully done there by Best, though. Can't take anything away from him. He brought this game back from an insane deficit. Uh, that two factory play I thought was going to end the game gave such a big advantage to Best barracks but best managed to bring it back just very impressive play from him and he's going to move on to face off against one of these zerg players in game number two let's jump right in here we are game number two is going to be on shun's favorite map monty hall yeah boy we've got best in the top left hero in the bottom right I wonder what kind of strategy Best is going to go for. I mean, it doesn't really matter what Hero had in mind because Best is going to do something cheesy. He's sending a probe down to the mineral patches over on the left side of this... Hero's face, and it looks like he wants to. What is, what is he now? What is he actually doing now? This 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 looks like he's gonna do the flashes version of the um, nine nine gate, where he's gonna make um, zealots far away from the wall, and then eventually make a gas geyser, and then convert the mineral wall um, using the gas geyser to mine out the wall uh, with the assimilator. Uh, I think he might be doing that. I, I don't know for sure, but it, it, I, I think this is what he's going to do because he wants to hide this as much as possible. So he's going to build, build the zealots far away 
and then um, mine out the wool utilizing the gas because you can obviously mine out the wool and then put the probe into the gas geyser, convert that mineral patch into a, a you know little gas canister, and then mine out the mineral wall again, and then just let the zealots rush in. And uh, yeah, I, I, I did this uh, play um, to um, some Zerg players back in the day when I used to play Protoss. So it works. Uh, it works pretty good. So I think that's what he's doing. Interesting. Interesting. Well, Hero's sending an overlord in this direction. So Bast might have a bit of trouble making that play work. We'll see, though. Um... He could, of course, just hop the zealot over like he did. Yeah, uh, he in might our be last doing match. that. There's only one gateway. Well, just the one gateway. I think he is doing that. Yeah, makes sense. Um, he's shown that he's pretty darn good at uh, making that work. So, I guess that makes sense. We're just gonna send in one zealot, maybe two. Try to get them into the main and deal some harassment to Hero, who doesn't have his pool finished yet. He's looking to take a third base. Uh, to the north, but he sees what's coming here, oh. and the drones are going to come down. What are they going to? What are they going to do? Are they going to try and hit the to probe or... to help glitch out the zealot as uh, it comes over? I see. Well, that didn't work too well, but we do have links on the way. The early spot was critical. Hero will yeah. be able to hold this. It's just how many de how many drones can we manage to kill? That's a great drill. A very, very good drill to start things off. He's already done half the HP off of this Zealot. And my goodness, is Hero good. He's just going to completely yeah. block this. Yeah. I mean, this is like 101. And uh, he's got very good fundamentals on getting the Lings back behind the mineral patch. Um, two by two. Kind of like a Noah's Ark there. Just making sure everything is neat and ordered. All the I's are dotted. All the T's have been crossed. And uh, he's really taken the wind out of the sails of Best here with this initial pressure play. Yeah, Best is not getting the damage he was looking for. But he gets a drone. There we go. Finally getting something for this uh, investment with the Zealot. But just one drone, it doesn't feel that good. Hero yeah. can just mine out this wall and send links through to kill that gateway. You're never going to be able to produce enough zealots to uh, hold off the, the amount of links that Hero can build. One dragoon pops out going after this overlord. Unfortunately, that isn't over high ground. A little bit of an oversight there for Hero, but... Maybe it just barely makes it out of vision. Sometimes you're unlucky. Sometimes oh. you're unlucky, honestly. Sometimes it's just luck. There it See? is. He loses it. That is painful. Losing one of your first couple of overlords. Yeah, this is um, a long supply block for Hero in the early game. Uh, it hurts more than any other time. A third base will yeah. come up. Hydralis Den is down. And so Hero may be wanting to mine that out and start to try and kill that gateway, get uh, a Hydra push going towards that base. Now he can't mine it, though. This is very smart play from Bess. Yeah, Bess is Nikocado Avocado yeah. over here. He's always two steps ahead. Look at him. <laughs> yeah, he's currently wearing the fat suit and mind gaming the hell out of Hero. Can't quite get a good read on his opponent's power level just yet. Gonna have to put on that scouter and get a more accurate reading. Hopefully he doesn't blow up on him. But yeah, I don't know. Like, Hero's got a third base coming up now. If he can just not, you know, take too much damage to these initial Corsairs, this could still be a good game for Hero. I mean, he just needs to stabilize his economy going into the mid game and uh, he's already got a few hydras positioned to not lose too many overlords so he might be propelling himself into a strong mid game here still oh yeah for sure he can definitely play this out uh, with the three bases going and how robust hero is even in these wacky situations i think we should still get a good game out of this uh Monty Hall mid and late game CVP is pretty insane, but I think it, Hero can definitely handle it. And I mean, what what is his follow up play to this? Do you think we're gonna see uh, drop this game? Is he going to uh, work in uh, or his way up into Mutalisk? I, I feel like that time has kind of passed. We're we're a little bit far yeah. behind. Oh, double Robo K. Best going to take control of the game once again. He's just dictating the pace here. 
Yeah, yeah. Okay, it looks like it's going to be uh, Mutalisks will be forced uh, anyway. It'll probably be um, Reverser, and then we'll have to have a, a Muta Scourge fleet of some size just to have some kind of uh, way of uh, dealing with the mobility of Best. Uh, usually you wouldn't be so scared of Reverser, especially on the ladder, just because, you know, it's such a hard build order to execute. Um, one of the hardest build orders to execute for Protoss players, actually. But at the pro gamer level, uh, they can obviously execute it just fine. So as Zerg, you have to really respect this. I'm worried for a hero with this build order and the little advantage that uh, Best has started this game off with. If Best just land, like the, the big problem, guys, with Reverse Air and why it's so hard to pull off is because it's very difficult to get a third base. And yeah you know that Hero will be extremely vigilant about preventing a third uh, throughout this but game, but there's high grounds in the bottom left and yes. top right that you can just land exactly. at, drop a couple of Reavers, exactly. build a bunch of cannons, and it's going to be very hard to deal with. Yeah, this is the the one like interesting thing about this map is that even though it's a semi-island map and it has two permanent islands in the top right and bottom left, making plays like Reavis uh, even that little bit more deadly than usual uh, on a map like Polypoid, for example, much more harder to sneak up that third base on the Zerg. As long as the Zerg player has good scouting, they should be able to shut you down before you can get cannons online at another location. But uh, yeah, unfortunately, um, um, for Hero on maps like this, he's got a kind of guaranteed third base with these island bases. So with the air superiority of the Corsairs, he's kind of forced to make some kind of mutilous scourge for you. Oh my gosh, this shuttle, this is a huge pick. That's a huge pick up right there. Doesn't necessarily kill the Reavers, but it doesn't matter. Just shutting down the utility of those shuttles is huge right now. That's massive, yeah. Best trying to hide that shuttle in a location he didn't expect Hero to scout, but I that, that is super impressive. Hero finding that shuttle with the map being as big as it is and uh, Scourge vision range being vision as small range. it is as it is. Like, how are you ever going to find that on a map like this? And he finds it. Somehow he that finds sense. that. Manages to pick it off. Uh, even though it wasn't just sitting over the robotics or anything, it was in a hiding spot. Best right. losing the shuttle, that's going to slow down his momentum quite a bit. Yeah, we referred to that as Star Sense back in the day. I don't think you can call it anything else saying you either have it or you don't. You know, that like sixth sense or seventh sense, whatever you want to call it. The ability to kind of like, you know, tap into the, the different realm or dimension. Uh, or whatever and somehow get the, you know your finger on the membrane of a different reality that can kind of teach you what's going to happen in the future but somehow this massive drop into the third base has just killed so many drones saying if he can't get this location under control and kills this hatchery this game might just be over for hero yeah this is always the scariest point in the reaver shuttle uh, game Oh man, he's gonna run right in here. Can he get this? Both the Reavers. He's gonna get both of them, and he only get loses a few hydras. This is a perfect engagement from Hero. Yeah, it's the scariest yeah. point in the game, uh, facing off against Reaver shuttle um, or Reaver Corsair play is that first drop. That first drop is when uh, you know all this power that's been building up uh, is gonna be right. unleashed, and if you lose a hatchery. And a lot of drones, you can just fall so far behind, it's unlosable for the Protoss player at that point. But I don't yeah. think this is unlosable. I think the hero has a pretty good chance still. He lost some drones, but he cleared out both the Reavers, and now he's ready for a potential counterattack, although this isn't open. And there's another two Reavers coming in. At the same time, Corsair is going to be attacking all of these overlords, potentially supply blocking, but not quite supply blocking hero. This is a drop. He's loading up. He's going into the main base, and that's going to cause Stopping a there. lot of problems for best. While these reavers are being cleaned up, he's going to be dropping into that main. That one scarab did dud in the middle of those hydras, so he easily cleans this. Now he's going to be losing the main. Oh boy, this is going to get hairy 
Chun, what is gonna happen in this game now? So many folks are gonna go down immediately. Uh, yeah, there's a Reva that can help out from the natural expansion, whoa, whoa, whoa. but he's not paying attention. He's gonna lose the shuttle. Oh my god, not like this. Holy sh- Oh, I can't believe it. This is- uh, He's now slugging it out with the other Reavers. Uh, the shuttle brings back two. Gonna start going and work with the Scarabs on clean cleanup duty on those re um, Hydras there. Have reduced the count to a manageable number now, but did lose a lot of mining time and isn't mining in this bottom left uh, island base yet as well so uh, after killing that base of a hero kind of resetting his own um, economy a little bit here is best so kind of the, the power of scales have kind of evened out a little bit damage on both sides but I don't know I feel like uh, if best can recover here and kind of stabilize and you know, I, I feel like this could be a very dangerous scenario for Hero. He's, he's now back to three bases again. And, uh, you know, now Best has this third base unchecked. I don't know if Hero knows about bottom left, but I feel like you would suspect... He must assume it. Yes, would, he should assume it. You would suspect immediately upon, you know, playing this map with Reaver. Oh, he sees it now. He sees it. He's confirmed it. He's sending the Overlords down there. He's going to try and deny this base. If he can get in there and kill that would be absolutely massive and bring him back in this game he is falling further and further behind as time goes on here comes the shuttle oh he can't pick it off he does have scourge though oh 12 hp 12 on that HP. he could get this you just need to get one more shot on that oh just two more shots are necessary and so it will survive long enough to drop the two reavers but one of the Reavers does get picked off. All the cannons are gone. Just spread the Hydras and send them in one by one. Should be able to deal with this one uh, Reaver. Yeah. And keeping Scourge just north of this position will prevent any more reinforcement. He does pick up and leave, though. Not willing to Weird. fight. You can you can bait out the Scarabs with the drop tech and just keep picking up the Hydras as well. Like, it's not too hard to micro down that uh, Reaver if it hasn't got any support. So I'm a little bit surprised that Hero hasn't elected to do that. I think he's realized now, like, oh, hang on a minute. I can just use my drop tech to out micro the Reaver here. No, he's just going to drop right on top of it. He does lose That's most crazy. of the Hydras. Yeah, I'm surprised to see him not pick up and, and dodge some of these shots. Even I can do that. That's kind of crazy. He's not even attempting to do that. Yeah, there's not a whole lot else going on on the map right now. He is droning up a little bit and, you know, macroing out of these hatches. But uh, you would imagine that Hero would at least give that a try. Um, mm. Maybe things have gotten a little too hectic and he's not quite thinking straight anymore. It's starting to yeah. fall a little bit out of control. But here we go. Drop in Hydra's on top of this once again. He does finish that off. And so he will be able to stop this base. And this is actually, this this is the biggest moment in this game. This is the big fight, is preventing the Protoss third. And as long as he can deny that third, he should be able to win. However, this counterattack, if it denies the fourth, things can get uh, e back into kind of an even tilt here right. between these two. Yeah. So it's, it's about denying bases right now. And best has to deny one more base. Otherwise, he's going to fall desperately far behind. Yeah, but I mean, if he if he loses his own mining, he's kind of just dead because this, this this third base is already kind of been isolated. There's only one cannon here. If he hasn't got any scarabs in this reaver, it's gonna be maybe lights out. He's got at least one. Yeah, he's only just now started to build scarabs, so he can't even shoot at the maximum um, uh, rate of fire at the moment. So yeah, no way he's got uh, defending against this hydralisk, uh, just opening up his whole position now so easily. And there's only one cannon in the main base. I don't know if he can even. To hang on there. I think Best is just dead. Damn, Best is running out of steam. He's got four, three Reavers to deal with these Hydras, so he won't lose the Nexus at least. And he may be able to just clean up all these, but oh my goodness, the big tech switch into Mutas has arrived. Heroes managed to put together enough minerals and gas to overwhelm these Corsairs and finally force them back. He's on a... Oh, okay, I thought he was going to catch the Corsairs there with some returning uh, Scourge, but those are actually Overlords heading back home to pick up more Hydras and start to drop in other locations. Here comes those Mutas. Gonna pick off one yeah. Reaver for free. He gets the shuttle as well. The Corsairs are coming down to assist, but they're a little bit too late. Bess is falling apart. This has just about been dismantled. 
Yeah, I think this is the last little hoorah or best here. I mean, technically, there's enough um, Corsairs to beat these Muirs. It's 5-3 to three with upgrades, and the Muirs already softened up. Technically, the Corsairs win that fight. Hero knows that. That's why he's not going in. But this game is more or less over. It's just that Hero's not stupid enough to, like, take battles. He knows he can't win right now. So he's going to, like, reconsolidate and then go in for the jugular in a few moments here. But 96 apply to 40. The riding is on the wall for best. There's no real way of recovering here. He can, you know, bear afford to throw some minerals together to keep building some probes here to restabilize this economy. Has a little bit of a counterplay potential with these two Reavers, but after that, there's going to be no more uh, available options for best going forward. Has got so many kills on these Reavers, though. It's kind of insane. Like, if he had perfect micro, maybe he'd get something done here, but there's just no utility. GG. Masterfully done by Hero. Everything ex aside from the drops in the bottom left was... Very well thought out, very well executed. Uh, it's so tough when the Protoss takes the initiative like that. And you, you just have to react. You just have to kind of figure out what's going on and have the perfect uh, counter, the perfect he reaction. He did, yeah. He managed to yeah. put everything together, get those bases out, get up to four base. Uh, even though he was losing bases, he was trading back with drops. You know, forcing the attention. Just barely, he was just barely getting in on top of that third base, like right as the second and third cannon were on the way. Like if he attacks any later, that position is way too fortified and suddenly like Best has got a game on his hands that he can start to slap around Hero in a few moments. So like Hero honestly barely shut down Best there. It was a very well calculated game from both sides. Yeah, you're right. That was that was really close. I, I can't tell you how annoying it is when you're playing against Reverse Air. And you've checked almost every base on the map, and then you find the one base that has six cannons and two reavers sitting at it, and you realize that you're going to have to play a 40-minute game. That is yeah. a very frustrating and annoying feeling, but uh, glad that Hero scouted that. In the bottom left, took care of it before it got out of hand. He takes game number two, and we'll go up against either Royal or Sharp. It's coming right up. Royal is going to be sent out next. He's spawned in the top left on Minstrel and Hero down here in the bottom right. He's got his work cut out for him. It's a tough map for this matchup. Not a great location to take your third base. And a lot of times we see players go for Hydralis Defiler to try and control the game here. Well, it makes sense. You, you have so much less gas, so it makes sense you'd want to, like, you know, try and mid-range your uh, unit composition out with more hydraulisk density but also the, the the way the lanes are structured you know it's it's, it's very like t like tight tunnel networks you got to worry about so things like lurkers and what have you like have so much more value so it makes sense that that kind of composition flourishes right mm -hmm. sending defilers down random path pathways with hydras no. hitting different bases from different angles is pretty hard to deal with as a Terran player you can't have marine balls in every single lane kind of have to right. leave spotters out and try to see which direction the army's coming from but that part of the game it requires hero to survive uh, the early game and get himself into hive and you know, get his upgrades rolling and his macro flowing before uh, moving out on the map and Royal is fantastic at punishing Zerg players as they're trying to make their way into that position. Yeah, that's very true. Astute observation there, saying It looks like it will be a 2.5 hatch out of Hero as well, so there will be a lot of room to punish for Royal. And if you do if you do want to punish, um, you don't want to do that early or mid-game. Like, uh, Zergs are just too strong in that super late game. Early game, they could be a little bit aggressive and threaten you, but during that mid-game phase, there's so many options for you to be aggressive as Terran and... I wonder what kind of like poison it's going to be here today from Royal. What's he's going to elect to do? Well, he started off with a little wall in the front. And he's going to get away with it. One Rack's fast expand is super strong in the current meta. Mostly because Zerg players are not very keen on punishing. And oh, here we go. Great block. No four pulls, right? No yeah, four no. pools in sight, so you get wave walls all day. Yeah, no four pool. It's not really in the meta 
um, and Zerg players prefer not to utilize it. I, I, I think I prefer that it's not in the meta as well. I don't like to see um, games end that quickly, but at the same time, I hate to see Terrans just constantly get away with these wall ends. I mean, I disagree, Sen. Like, I mean, I'm happy to disagree, but I, I, I love the idea of like it being like the finals and like it, the, the, the it, people's like games are at stake and they're just pulling out the four pool. Like the balls you have to have to do that. I mean, it's like watching poker, no limits. It's just mm. like you need to have some real balls to go for those kinds of plays. And I, if anything, it makes me super excited, even though the game will be short lived. Well, we can agree to disagree, but <laughs> we don't have four pool today. Hero's going to play a nice long game, and uh, with the 2.5 hatch, he's going to have some good macro behind this, enough to contend with Royal uh, and whatever he's planning to do. I It looks like he's throwing down a few more racks, and he's gone for the academy. So, three racks academy. What kind of build is this, Shun? Wow. I mean, this is like uh, a little bit of a, a weird play, like a bit of a blast from the past, a bit of a hodgepodge, uh, trying to do a sunken bust to uh, kind of take um, Hero off guard here. And to be fair, like, um, he Hero's not sulky. Like, Hero's very, very tight with his defenses, but not quite on sulky's level. So if this is going to work against anyone, do it against someone that's not sulky. So I, I, can, I can see him maybe making this work against Hero. He might just barely not have enough Sunkens ready in time. Although he is going to be scouting it right now. He sees it. He sees the extra the racks. He sees the extra racks and the timing. So no now way. Hero's got this more map. This now Hero's got this more mapped out, and he sees every even the timing of the the factory, and even almost um, kills the SCV that was building it. He's going to get it. He's going to get it. He's going to get it. Oh, he can't find job. it. He can't find it. Royal sent that into to the back patch. And so yeah. the two SCVs in front were blocking. He couldn't get on top of it. Uh, nice to delay the eBay though. It puts the Terran player a little bit on edge. Like, are they going to actually have these turrets on done in time? But no, uh, he's, he's got it that, well in time. He's he doesn't have any um, any worry about these mutas getting in before the turrets are finished. And Hero's not beelining it across the map either. So. Right. Uh, this is going to be fine, but spotting the three racks is, is kind of big. And look at this. Royal hasn't even been able to pressure a single uh, sunken colony out. So th this play is kind of falling apart. Like, what what was the point of the three racks if we're not even going to force any sunkens? Yeah, I mean, it depends on how, how how much control Hero can find of his micro right now. If he can stay on top of the, the Terran production and keep um, Royal back right now, this is a world of hurt for Royal. If he if, if Royal has done a good enough job of like positioning his turrets and whatnot so he can actually threaten counterattacks, then this is a different story. Then Hero has to actually throw down a crazy amount of sunkens that he doesn't want to. But right now, like he's not set up well enough that he can just like threaten a counter attack. He looks like he's going to do it anyway, which he probably should because right now Hero doesn't want to make any sunkens and he may be forced to if he can get some map control with these marines right here right now. The dive through from Hero didn't go quite as well as he planned. He had the seven mutas, he had the one shot potential, but he missed one shotting SCVs about four times there, so only getting you know, two or three SCVs total. Kind of a bust yeah. on the uh, Mutalist harassment, unfortunately. And now he's in this stage of the game where he has to track the Marines and prevent them from just diving into his natural. He can't do a lot of counterattack damage until uh, we have Lurkers on the field. Until the Zerg has Lurkers and some real defense to hold these three bases. But he's moving towards the natural. He's going to bait the Marines back a little bit. And as long as the Marines are right in the natural, it's fine. Diving on top of these Marines, he's getting hit from the low ground, so he's going to bail out. Pretty decent engagement there from Hero, but he loses no. a few mutas and drops quite a bit of their health as well. Honestly, yeah, a little bit of a, a bit of a blunder there. Uh, maybe not trading out quite as well as he was hoping for. 
but uh, he has got a lot of Muta Ling out on the field, so if one little mistake from Royal and suddenly these Lings can start to get some beautiful trades coming up here, he, and if he if he, he doesn't want to lose these Marines to Lings right now, if he can just buy time and just not die to these Lings, he's going to be in a pretty okay position, can maybe make one or two firebats, but instead he might, he sees them, he's going to run back inside. This is great play from Royal, tactically using this choke point, realizes that there's the Muta Ling cleanup on aisle five, just waiting for him a few moments away. And uh, it was a while there before um, Hero started to build his tech. He was just pretty much building nothing but Mutalisks and Lings before finally making the Hydralisk den. So honestly, like, um, Royal's ahead of the tech curve. He just needs to make sure he doesn't make a mistake with his army because right now the, the, the power scales are so against him. One little uh, out of position mist mistake and he could just die instantly. I'm not a big fan of the Ling play, the middle Ling play on this map. I feel that Minstrel yeah. is really difficult to make this work. Uh, in, in general, just like Ultraling as well. Like it's just mm -hmm. not as good on this map. You can't really get the good surrounds. Think about no. how the lings were coming up across that bridge. That's not a good place to surround. Just the only spot that's any decent is where Royal is standing right there. But as soon as he hits the stim and starts to run back, it's again not a good position to dive into. So I really don't see a great opportunity for Hero to kill this army. And he spent so much money. Uh, building lings and those are not drones that should be mining at these bases his hive right. is coming up and his lurker upgrades should be finishing soon but i think that royal has weathered this storm and he should be in a good position to push across the map in just a few moments he can really put on the pressure and the hero's not going to be ready for it he's going to be in the midst of droning and getting into his you know macro hatcheries and uh, getting his upgrades and all that and there's gonna present quite a few opportunities for royal to try and put on damage yeah i think there's gonna be a lot of opportunity for um royal here but to be fair like hero is sitting pretty healthy at night at like 100 supply and uh, he's actually getting his lurkers across the map this is actually a, a bit of a mistake from royal he's not got any map control so now the lurkers can start to tighten the noose around him and then the defilers will get way too close to his rally point than he would like so this could spiral out of control very quickly for royal if he doesn't uh, resecure some ground uh, from Hero, and uh, these defilers will start to come a knocking on his door from the, the center or top lane here. Yeah, this could be a great way to uh, forego, you know, having to defend the base in the top top right. Yeah, as long as you've got pressure on the Terran player and they don't have drops on the map to punish you, yeah. keep them back, keep them forced into a, a corner. Oh, here we go, a bust Ooh. over in the top, but these links are going to come in very handy. Uh, helping out the lurkers and look at this he's gonna dive right on top of this bio force picking all of that off he can start to shove forward even closer and almost contain royal right up inside of his natural this is getting really scary uh, defilers yeah. are gonna come out soon there's still a path for royal to get out on the map if he heads south but that doesn't help him to defend against this uh, incoming Defiler. The Defiler's making its way across the map. There's still links here for the consume, and there's a lot of lurkers ready to go. Hero, uh, Hero's about to close this one if Roll doesn't make something happen very soon. Yeah, the Defiler's basically just like a queen that's diagonally moving across the board and is about to put Royal into check. He may even just give up as soon as he starts to see these Dark Swarms come down. It's going to be an absolute nightmare. Here comes the orange clouds of death, like... like Dorito cheese dust, whatever you want to call it. Like, this stuff is just an absolute nightmare for Terrans to deal with, especially when it's on your rally point right next to your mining bases. So, these last for like whole entire minutes, and uh, you can't really do any damage to them underneath the Dark Swarm once the lurkers are borrowed, um, unless you got like fire bats. And uh, without dim defense matrix, the bats will probably not even live long enough to help you kill the lurkers. So, it's pretty much just a, a situation that involves nothing but death and carnage for the Terran player no matter what as we can see here a uh, small counter attack going to be coming into the natural expansion of hero but there's still too many units in the rally point to make that uh, big anything of fruition so it looks like this is going to be the last hurrah of uh, royal before he uh, finally concedes royal wanted to get in between the rally point and uh, his natural but 
There's so many pathways on this map. It's so easy yeah. for Hero to just walk defilers in different directions and eventually use get one to the front. Yeah, use the Nidus, send them around the top side. Uh, use the different pathways that are available to them. And this army sitting out in the middle is going to be doing nothing but holding ground and, uh, you know, not preventing anything from making its way over. He does bring this army to the back, but it's been plagued. And with just a bunch of lings surrounding and... It's just, it's, it's done. It's wiped out. Royal is yeah. seconds away from tapping. He still has a good number of vessels, so he can continue to irradiate, but without this mining at the natural and getting forced back, the, it's just a matter of time. The Defiler will eventually make its way to the front, and there goes all the Marines. Before the Defiler even arrives, everything is already dead, and these Lurkers can win the game. Not even necessary, the Cheeto dust on top of the barracks, but... It's just going to be I a mean, part of the nail in the coffin. This is what happens when you let the Zerg get an easy three gas on Minstrel. I mean, I think this is a big mistake from Royal to even allow Hero to get this set up in the first place. Uh, I think it's a little bit deserved from uh, Royal. I think he should be way more on top of Hero in this game and not letting him get away with things like this. A little bit of a, a, a little bit of an up, um, unfortunate performance, I would say, from Royal. But uh, really well played from Hero to like execute it to this perfection. Like it's kind of just like absolutely brutal with the three gases of Zerg. There's just like the vessels will not be enough. Like the vessels hold off two gas worth of Zerg, not three. I don't know what Royal's doing right now. He's processing the loss or something. He's kind of maybe in disbelief at what Hero's been able to do this game, keeping the pressure on his side of the map and threatening with the lings the entire time. Didn't feel like Royal could even move out. And then suddenly there's lurkers and defilers in his natural. I mean, there's I mean, always ways to win, commit, but <laughs> it didn't feel like to the three racks way. early. He should just have the balls to commit to it. I mean, mm -hmm. you just, you got to do it. It's minstrel. You know that the third gas is going to be exposed. You need to take advantage of that. You can't just sit and wait for lurkers to contain you. And then the defiler, the dark swarm you down. Like that's a losing play too, right? Yeah. It's better to take the gamble and at least give yourself a fighting chance in that mid game phase. For sure. Three barracks. I don't, I really don't see the point of it. You know, maybe there's some genius behind that that wasn't able to show itself in this game. I wouldn't, I wouldn't advise it, guys. Stick to your early plus one. Early plus one seems to be the meta right now. It, uh, Royal is great with just two racks. Uh, stim rush, too. At least forcing out some no. sunkens would have been good. It's very hard to defend with sunken in top right. If you just do a two racks play and, you know, get out there at five minutes, you should be able to do some damage, right? You should at least be able to force a bunch of sunkens in top right. Mm -hmm. But he mm -hmm. wasn't able to do anything and paid the price. Let's jump into our next yep. game. Hero going to continue on. Mini or Bisu, who's coming out next? Mini, the next opponent for Hero. And Hero, you know what? Has the opportunity to all kill yeah. in this week of KCM. He's on the way. Uh, he's the last person who will have... Oh, no, wait. There is still a possibility. If Hero gets beaten by Mini and Mini takes down uh, all three Zerg players, that's a potential yeah. reverse all kill. But right. just two more wins. Mini and Bisu. Well, he's got to beat Sharp as well. But if he takes down Mini and Bisu, Hero can get that all kill prize. 800,000 won. It's about uh, $800. Am I right about that, Shun? Uh, I don't. I, I want to say. I want to say it's. It's. It, it, I want to say that's correct, but it might be eight eight thousand. Is it? Is it eight hundred or eight thousand? I mean, it's it's one of those. I, I I don't know for sure, guys. I'm 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 not sure at all. So here's how I remember. Uh, Japanese yen and yeah. Korean won are one decimal point different. So eight hundred thousand won right. would be eighty thousand yen. And 80,000 okay. yen is $800. So that's how I would remember. 800 Canadian dollars. American, it fluctuates a lot um, between Japanese yen and uh, American dollars. I think it's around like 147, 149 
now, so it's obviously a lot less in American dollars, but... There's too many Monopoly currencies to remember. <laughs> Basically in All the colors of the rainbow. Yes, basically in Korea, you would spend it like eight hundred dollars. It would go a lot further uh, in Korea than it would in, say, America. Well, it's still a nice little chunk of change to scoop up, no matter what it is. You know, eight hundred, eight thousand. These guys probably just want it out of principle. You know, they see those chips on the table and they want to win the hand. So I'm sure whatever it is, sixty, six hundred, six thousand, it don't matter. It's mine. <laughs> Well, Mitty is going to open up with two gateway. He really wants this win. Unfortunately for him, cross map is going to be difficult to get damage with this. He hasn't even yeah. spotted his opponent. He finally sees that he's in top left. And yeah, good job. Go ahead. I was going to say, good job picking, like, going in base two gate um, <laughs> the one time you cross map, right? Right. And on one of the biggest maps in the pool as yeah. well. Yeah. yeah. Pantheon. Pantheon. So big. Maybe he just didn't want to play a straight up game and, you know, wants to get this one over with. I'm not sure, but uh, maybe he was just hoping that he was in close positions and then he would get lucky. There's the two zealots. Oh, he's managed to dodge it, so he's hiding yeah. it pretty well. Uh, which is good. But we've already got a lot of links out. Is he popping drones behind this? No, more links are coming. So Hero sees the three zealots now. He can continue to build links. There's not a lot of probes with this. I've seen a lot of Protoss players pull, you know, three or four probes with this attack. Yeah. And it, well, that was and the it, original. That was the original attack was three probes, three zealots. Now it seems to be the modern meta is to just send like one probe. But I mm. think like if you're going to commit to it, you might as well commit with the three probes, three zealot. I think if, but, um, if Mini wants to a, a continuation into an expansion, that's why he's not doing it. He wants to give himself more like, you know, counter plays to like, you know, continuing the game through an expansion of his own and what have you. Wow, Hero's just going to go across the map with all of his lings, sacrificing the third to try and do some counter damage. Uh, zealots are in the middle of the map, and they might be caught. He could catch them against this wall that's just to the north. Uh, yeah, he will. He's great catch here from Hero, dealing a lot of damage to these zealots, and this is going to make that counter attack even stronger uh, as it comes in. And he can't build a battery close to the ramp as well right now. So, uh, there's a battery actually in the natural expansion. Has to commit to the natural expansion, which gives more surface area available to Hero here. Trying to do a good job of getting surround on these Zealots. Probes helping out a lot though. Finally, the probes start going down. He has to concede ground back onto the high ground now. Both Zealots popping like zits though, unfortunately. Does get some recharge on these other two Zealots that are out in the periphery, but they're dangerously low on HP, about to go down. So it looks like Hero is doing a great job of cl closing in with these lings and causing some absolute mayhem. Sunken's doing a good job of buffering back at home. Zealot does get into the main base, but with some lings coming out of the egg, should be able to clear that up without losing too many drones, maybe one or two here. Yeah, one drone goes down, but many kind of left those zealots to their own design in the natural, just letting them walk in and fight, and they ended up fighting that uh, sunken colony for quite a long time, getting a lot of value out of that sunken, and Mini not microing well enough back at home either. Kind of being beaten on both fronts. Hero out microing yeah. on two sides. And taking stuff. him down, yeah. Very good decision making there from Hero. Uh, as soon as he saw that play coming, instant sunken in the natural, just give up the third and immediately counter attack. Worked out beautifully. The catch on the Zealots in the middle of the map, of course, was super impactful as well. Uh, it allowed him to uh, have that extra time uh, to prevent the shield battery defense in the natural from really getting underway. Having that little bit of damage on the Zealots beforehand helps. And wow, Hero is on his way to an all kill. Only two more wins are necessary. Can either of these two players bring it back? Sharp is on fire lately. He's the guy I said I was most excited about watching play today so i hope he can take a win over hero let's see if he can make it happen well the stars have aligned here shouldn't we've got sharp versus hero and without giving any spoilers this is after their match in the ssl so it's very interesting 
for us to get the opportunity to see these two compete again. Uh, and yeah, I'm we, sure we, we're, not, we, yeah. we're not going to talk about the results of that, obviously, guys, no. for spoiler reasons. But 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 this is a fantastic opportunity to get a rematch between these two guys. And so both, both Sane and I and you guys, I'm sure, back at home, if you have seen it, also are going to be dialed in. Or even if you haven't seen it, maybe it'll give you some idea of what's to come between those two guys. Pretty good series. I recommend you watch it if you haven't yet already. For sure. A lot of creativity was shown. Uh, in yeah. that match, and I'm I'm looking forward to seeing more of that. Uh, Hero going to be opening with this 12 pool. Wall in from Sharp. That's what he's been showing consistently, as most Terran players have. Uh, just going for the wall in pretty much every game. But what will he place behind this wall in? He has a tricky uh, style. It's difficult to get a yeah. hold on. Uh, now, now, call me crazy, <laughs> Sand. Call me crazy, Sand. But like, we just need to see four pools. I'm serious. Like, <laughs> like, like, just, can, can, just, just, like, like, exhibit A. Like, imagine this was a four pool. The links come in, and hello, you did a wall in, and now you're in trouble. Like, mm -hmm. am I wrong? <laughs> you're not on. wrong. We need to teach these Terrans a lesson. We need to teach these Terrans not to go for the wall in every single game. <laughs> Yeah, the wall in is a is a double edged sword. Of course, you can lose immediately to the uh, early uh, ling pressure from a four pool, for example. Mm. But it's also the double edged sword in that you can lose that wall to, for example, a lurker play or just a well timed and well executed muta attack. Uh, those are some very vulnerable buildings there at the front, but. We haven't seen a lot of Lurker play, we haven't seen a lot of Fort Pool lately, uh, and players have gotten better and better at dealing with the, the Mutalisk attack, so there there does have to be eventually a, a trade-up, a change in the uh, the play styles for these, Terran, uh, for these Zerg players. Wait a second, this drone is so low, and the first Marines come across the map, he's gonna lose this. Oh my god, it survived. That is ridiculous. Absolutely oh, so ridiculous. Close. 3 HP. Oh my god, my heart was skipping a beat there. That was absolutely insane. And these other Ling's are already taking a few hits as well. If he gets the SCV block with the two Marines, oh. it's going to be a nice little trade here. Actually going way better than this trade should usually go. This is really good for Sharp. That trade would not usually go this well for the Terran player. So, like, even though he didn't get the drone, I would say, you know, the lost mining time and the fact that he, he traded better here in the follow-up, I would say that's reasonable compensation to be happy with this position. That's not too bad. Usually when sending that first marine across the map, all you're looking for is to force the drone off the mineral patch for a yeah. few seconds, but yeah. Yeah, you force them back up into the main and he did lose the marine, but he killed quite a few lings. It's it's not a bad spot here for Sharp. I, I've been noticing Sharp uh, in a lot of his games recently targeting very well with the marines uh, in these early game yeah. groups. And he... Yeah. Like Ling versus Marine, Naked Marine with no stim. He targets very well. I think he's been putting in extra effort into his bio control, specifically mm -hmm. lately. Um, I think, he, yeah, and I think he has been trying to showcase that more than anything else in his play as of late, and that's been shining through a lot. I think that's one thing you can notice more about his play is that his 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 Marine usage is pun intended a lot more sharp. Yeah, most. A lot of players will, even in the, these early game situations when you've got, you know, five marines or something and the opponent's got six lings, uh, a lot of times you'll just be using an A-click, uh, an attack command, but it feels like Sharp always targets individual lings as they're attacking and he seems to take better engagements because of it. I wonder if he's also, like, manually aligning the marines to shoot with a, man of a move command to align them as well if he's mm. like doing some extra like fancy stuff to like get them to just line up a little bit crisper on his target firing i don't know if he's doing something extra fancy if he's like really pushing himself to the limits to try and find a way at like fixing some of the issues he's been having in his uh his matchup history like he's not been like you know known as the the versus zerg guy but recently he's been playing better in that matchup and you know things like his bio control and his creativity have been doing really well so uh, i'm curious to see 
if like where he this guy's gonna let land up in the future in like a year or two years time like how, how is he gonna is he gonna still like play and be a pro gamer what do you think this guy is likely to retire soon well if he uh continues to do this well i think there's only one way for him to go is to to continue oh. to rise yeah. and i think so uh, as long as he doesn't lose this momentum, he's going to be one of the best Terran players. Uh, he's already one of the best Terran players in the world, but he could be the best Terran player in the world uh, very soon. So uh, I'm looking forward to that. I'm cheering for uh, Sharp personally. Uh, I want to see him go really deep in these big tournaments, but I'm also watching him here in KCM and, and really cheering for this guy who's been showing us so much great play and so much improvement. That's what people love to see, Jun, is improvement. Yeah, I mean, and, and he's he's got that. I mean, if you, if you guys are even only slightly up to date with the SSL, you would know that, you know, this guy, he's, you know, he's, he's made, he had, he made his dream of, you know, getting into the round of eight. And, uh, you know, he, he's done a lot. He's come a long way as a player. He wasn't thought of as one of these higher echelon players. But the, the most recently, in the last year or two, he's really been, like, one of the most hardworking pro gamers out there, just really dialing in everything that was wrong with his play, really going the extra mile. And it seems like he's starting to suss it out. And it seems like he's on a warpath trying to get, get somewhere very quickly. Uh, just like Hero trying to, like, um, force a turnaround here. But Sharp's not having any of it just just putting a lot of pressure out onto the the map with his bio units forcing hero to come to him rather than having to worry about too much more further damage from these mutilisks in the main base a lot of mutilisks have been made here from hero and his supply is very high 66 to 67 a little bit uh deceptive but with that high supply, Hero stands a pretty good chance of diving this Marine Force. It's quite small. Reinforcements are coming, but will they arrive in time? Hero taking his uh, his time now, picking off these Marines. And so he won't be able to finish off all of the medics. And that remainder of Marines as the reinforcements come up. This will be a little bit too hard to dive upon, but... He is doing a great job every time getting swipes. Did make a little mistake there, but Sharp is dwindling in his overall Marine count, and eventually Hero's going to overwhelm this, I feel. Yeah, no, he will overwhelm it, but to be fair, like, Sharp was doing a pretty good job of, like, keeping his bio in tight box formation and what have you, so honestly, like, it was a pretty good effort from Sharp. He just kind of got caught with his pants down a little bit there, and the, the initial bio ball got overwhelmed before it could could get reinforced because of how many additional uh, Mutalisks Hero made. Sharp didn't quite anticipate that, so a bit of a, a tempo swing going Hero's way, and now it's going to be a little bit more challenging for Sharp to come out onto the map and do anything about this third gas that's underway. Uh, yeah, I feel like um, this is going to be Hero's game to shine now uh, because there's not really going to be much counterplay options available to Sharp for the next moment here. This is the critical weakness of Zerg is transitioning now uh, into Hive, into Lurkers and what have you. But now that he's shut down the initial push, it looks like uh, Sharp's going to be relegating to a Valkyrie timing at like 10 minutes, maybe trying to come out onto the map with some Valkyries and seeing if he can hit uh, like that. But I'm not sure that's going to be in time. I think like by the time he gets there, it's going to be too late, right? This is a trap that a lot of Terran players will fall into is they lose their first bio ball and the muta number is still really high. So they immediately switch into Valkyrie uh, to try and counter the continued mutalist production. But the Zerg players already moved on. They're heading into Lurker. And by the time these Valkyries pop out, Lurker is going to be uh, on the field and in force uh, to no. keep this fourth base alive. And Sharp's vessel production and his uh, further tech is going to be slowed down quite a bit. But because of yeah. making these Valkyries, he's just not going to be able to get over here in time. The Lurkers are already on the way. This is uh, going to be a hold from here, I imagine. 
Well, he would. He, he's going to hold the natural, but if he goes bottom right, he might be able to break bottom right. There's only two lurker eggs on the way in the bottom right, so he would technically bust through res. There's five here on the natural, so if Sharp had beelined all the way to the third base with these Valkyries and bio units, maybe he busts him because there's only going to be two lurkers that he has to fight, and he can overcome that. With the plus one armor upgrade already finished, he doesn't have to worry about his Marines getting one shot down from those, so I feel like if he had just gone for the, the third base, maybe he had a chance here, but now that he's kind of squandered at this timing, I feel like it's uh, going to be a bit of a nightmare situation for him going forward. I feel like Hero is going to have a very strong hold of this game. Look at what Sharp is prioritizing. He's prioritizing uh, his Valkyries taking out Overlords around the map. And yeah. that's probably going to be... Oh, wait a second. Did he scan? Okay, he did scan that. Very important that he scans that and doesn't walk into that Lurker landmine. He's getting rid of overlords around the map, which leads me to believe he's probably going to go for a crazy drop. Oh, these two lurkers in the middle are going to get so much damage. Oh, he finds it. He finds it here and no damage wow. at all. Dude, wow. Hero just doesn't uh, activate the lurker landmine and now he's going to hit this from behind. Dude, Hero really messed up. Yeah, that's a squandered opportunity like crazy there for Hero. I don't know why he like just... I don't even know if he like, pay, was paying attention or he was just being super greedy there, but the vessels came in super clutch just in the last nick of time. Like, maybe he was trying to get super greedy with the lurker timing there, but I don't know. Maybe he just wasn't paying attention or something. That was a bit weird from Hero. Definitely lost opportunity. Now there's a lot of potential pressure coming out for him. And he, even though the vessels are late, eventually the radiates will start to become a little bit of a, a nuisance, but... I don't know. This is a little bit precarious. I mean, the lurkers aren't stacked as well, so it's like easier for him to break through the the target firing here. If, if they're all stacked on top of each other, it's like you have to kill one at a time. But now he can irradiate two at a time and clean this up a little bit more efficiently and what have you. Be a little, I think there's enough muta flock here that there's nothing will transpire with the the. I think this dropship plays a big mistake from Sharp. I don't I don't like this gamble of the dropships at the moment. Well, he was definitely going to go for that after killing, you know, running around killing off all these overlords, uh, making yeah, the space on the map, but yeah. But there's too many muters left still, and mm. like he's already cut his vessel count enough that cutting right. it more with the dropships is just too painful. Yeah, I ex I know what you're saying, and it makes sense. He's going to lose these two Valkyries, just kind of throwing them away. Uh, a little bit sad. Uh, they would help a lot with a drop like this. If the, the drop is going on um, at one of these bases and the the mutilists come to deal with that, it's a great move to yeah. just bring the Valkyries around and, and, and stop that from occurring. But uh, he's going to lose a bunch of Marines out in the middle of the map. Um, he's being harassed by this one lurker that he left to uh, its own devices. If you remember uh, when he surrounded those lurkers on the left-hand side a bit earlier, he left one lurker alive. And eventually that's going to become a pain in his side. Uh, now going to bring his Marines together to get rid of that. Can finally start to mine on this third base. But this is a significant delay. Hero's bought himself a lot of time. And he can make this transition. He hasn't taken no. much damage from the drop. It's just denying his fourth base for now. And I mean, eventually you're going to be able to walk up there and just plague that when the Terran player is not paying attention. Yeah, right now, basically, this is uh, just denying Hero from getting 1,200 gas a minute instead of 900 gas. So, uh, yeah, this is like making sure he's like a little bit more... Uh, oh, he's oh. careful! He loses the Defiler. It's a beautiful plague, but losing the Defiler for it is a little bit rough. It's a shame. Uh... I, I, I don't know, actually. Like, maybe there's a... Uh, uh, Sharp is going into BCs as well. So I'm a little bit concerned that if if Hero doesn't catch wind of this and suddenly there's, like, BCs hitting his gas expansions and he hasn't had time to, like, throw down a spore or something, maybe this could escalate really quickly out of control. But so far, doing a pretty good job of shutting down some of these vessels. He still hasn't been able to get a, get a good count of vessels out on the map because of how delayed they've been with the commitment into the Valkyries and dropships. So still not much pressure on the front door despite having very limited uh, lurkers holding the gate right now. Now four dropships, are you kidding me? He really wants to gamble with them. I don't know why t the Terran players are addicted to this. Like, it, Terran players have gotten so used to going for this. It's like, it, it, it's, I don't know, man. It's like they got a gambling addiction or something. Like, we need to have a talk about this, I think. This is like a problem for the Terran players. Terran players need an intervention and sit them down and 
talk about their problems with dropship addiction dropping into the main <laughs> potentially oh gosh he's just gonna go for it this is pretty insane a lot of scourge are available but they're not in position can he actually pick this all off oh god this is going really bad for sharp but wait a minute okay it just barely works barely out. works this is, out this is the gamble this is the gamble saying like sometimes it pays off and sometimes it's 40 supply down the drain buddy like the spin to win you know sometimes the <laughs> slots line up and sometimes they don't that's why we call them lotto ships boys yep marine's gonna go behind these uh mineral line uh, get these drones I may end up getting the spawning pool as well uh, drawing the lurkers away from the front is the big play though if he can suddenly bust the front now it'll all be worth it but no not going to be possible no defy yeah. or no no science vessels where do the science vessels go by the way did we lose all uh, of our science the scourge vessels? the scourge pretty much obliterated them i think a few returned back to base but the rest got picked off by scourge so i don't Oof. think he's got many vessels right now yeah oh, just no. a couple out on the map Okay, four total. He must have lost yeah. quite a few during that attack. That so. is rough. Hero's going to start getting out of control as he gets this fourth gas online. We are at 16 minutes, but it's still plenty of time on four gases to get to, to get ultras out and to start putting the pressure back onto the Terran player. Right. I mean, it's just so hard though that now that the Zerg's got the fourth gas coming online, it's just gonna the game will start to run rampant for Sharp. It's gonna be very challenging to keep a hold of the game. He needs to like somehow find a way of like threading the needle. Um, but then he, first he's got to find that needle in the haystack t to like you know thread the needle. So it's, it's a little bit of a confusing operation that Sharp's got to figure out here to punish the gas timings of a hero and uh, somehow manage to get the BCs down there and soak up enough gas out of uh, the, the, the tank of hero that he can still keep control over the Zerg and keep them contained on these four gases long enough that he can get his own fourth base up and running and what have you. But it's still going to be a tough, tall order here. Two dropships coming down into his bottom right. With these uh, Ultras already irradiated, maybe something can be done here. There might be just enough firepower. This could be super annoying for Hero to clean up. Yeah, maybe he can kill the Ultras. It's it's a little bit tough, but look at that. He kills two Ultras pretty quickly, and now he's taking control over this base. I'm a little bit surprised to not see Sharp do an Eraser trick, though, because he killed the Spire, and there's no Scourge. So, you know, irradiating a bunch of uh, lurkers and defilers and stuff, it feels like a waste. If you just irradiate one uh, vessel, and ju like it's just yeah. sitting there, what is it doing? Just irradiate the vessel and kill every single drone. This is such a strong play, but he's continuing to just irradiate uh, Zerg army rather than doing this this eraser play which is so maybe strong. he's worried about it being negated by burrow but it's possible hero skimped out on burrow and doesn't even have it so he might as well go for it and just check to see if he's got burrow or not first at least uh but yeah not not going with, like and the drop's getting shut down pretty handsomely on this side of the field as well so hero's not really oh this is could be a good run by here but the ultra disc is body blocking just barely enough that the marines can't be much of a threat and now the ling's streaming out of these three hatcheries that popped up recently i don't think there's going to be enough critical mass of bio that's going to be threatening hero i feel like hero is just going to start to run out of control here but the fourth base is now online for sharp if we can get some bcs across the map hitting some of these gas expansions keeping hero occupied maybe something can happen here but it's going to be difficult spire is done now so you know continuing with uh these vessels just sitting over top of the bases is eventually going to backfire for sharp Sharp losing a lot of his army that was sitting out in front of this third base. Lings are now on the map, and soon Ultras will be out here as well. So he's going to hit top center. That has a couple of bunkers, so it should be able to survive. Uh, as long as they're both full, we're not sure on that. Yeah, he is going to jump out and stim. Uh, does need to go ahead and repair the bunker, but he will survive for now. Trying to break into this uh, bottom right natural once again, not using eraser. It's kind of uh, triggering me right now <laughs> because every, every Terran player will do this to you uh, when they yeah. know that you don't have a spire, but Sharp is just not realizing that it's a good play at this point 
hovering over top of each of these bases, but not erasing down every single drone. Uh, he's going to continue to irradiate defilers uh, and ultras and try to break through everywhere, but he's still being stopped. He's still being held back, and hero supply is growing. 134 is a fantastic supply. You can definitely yeah. fight, especially against 138. Yeah, honestly, like this is like uh, like look like those sci-fi movies you see where like the human race is like doing everything they can to like keep the aliens at bay or whatever. But it's like it's only a matter of time before the virus can no longer be contained and suddenly it's unleashed out onto the map and it's no longer a, a quarantine that's being upheld it's uh you know the end of your civilization as we know it or what have you so this is gonna get a little bit crazy here for sharp even though on paper it looks like everything's just gravy unfortunately that's gonna very quickly unravel as the tendrils of his very existence will start to become weakened as hero here starts to tear at them with the <laughs> the tenacity that will be hard to rival with someone of his macro capabilities yeah this is the scary point in the game for the terran player they've been on the zerg's case all game long punishing and punishing and trying to get damage but suddenly the tables have turned and it's time for terran to try and block some aggression and it's very difficult to stop these super mobile forces from getting in on all your bases and here we go oh. jumping on the scvs killing a ton of them at 12 o'clock battle cruisers are finally online but it's a little bit too late the dark swarm comes down we're gonna have a spore here in a moment and we're also oh wait a second hold on hold on hold on sharp is actually gonna break through the natural over in bottom right it's a scary moment here for hero if he loses all this he loses the nidus uh, we can get up into the, 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 the basin bottom right and maybe shut that down. Sharp has no mining in his main natural, but he does have the third base online. He's got battle cruisers coming out. Eventually, you can clear. You can clear Ultralis from the skies. He's going to stop this fourth base. Did Hero make a huge mistake with his counterattack and not dealing with this army that was got bearing down on his bottom right natural? I think so, Shun. Oh, I mean, the drones at the very least are going down in that bottom right, saying, and the, the main and natural are mined out for Hero. So he has resecured this like six o'clock um, natural third. So he will have that to mine from and get a gas going there. So that, that, that might give him enough gas in the tank to finish Sharp off. But this is a very valiant effort from sharp to try and cut off a few of the heads of the hydra to see if he could somehow kill this fucking myth myth mythological beast that is hero but it doesn't seem like he's going to be able to do so i think there's enough heads remaining that eventually they will regrow and he will still be drowned out of this game here soon yeah if he was able to hold on to center left during all of this Maybe if he if he had, you know, five, six battle cruisers potentially sitting over the natural as well. Slowing everything down and killing off these ultras. There's yeah. some hope, but with hero. I mean the battle cruisers they're online, but they're not operational, you know what I mean? Saying right. like they're not really doing anything this game. Oh, here we go. Finally he re remembers that uh, the <laughs> razor the exists, but there's the burrow, yeah. It's gonna prevent. That's what he was worried about. It's gonna prevent him from mining for a little bit, but it's not going to, you know, seriously harm Hero in this game. Burrowed links underneath each uh, command center. He will eventually be able to <laughs> land uh, over at center left, but the base in bottom right is mining gas once again. We're gonna be able to mine uh, from six o'clock in a moment here. Hero has 900 minerals and quite a bit of gas to work with, so yeah. he's eventually going to put together a giga army that just can't be beaten by what Sharp has. He's not going to be able to make a critical mass of marines again. The uh, battle cruisers are annoying, but they're not that difficult to deal with once you've got the correct unit comp, once you've got the scourge numbers out as well. Right. And so Sharp, I mean, with 34 minerals remaining, going to start to mine center left once again, but the counterattack is immediate. It's swift right up into this main base. He's going to start to lose buildings and right off the bat, and GG is called. Cannot handle Hero in this game. Beautifully done here by Hero. Ah, the, the dropship addiction was too strong, man. He, he tweaked out.
Sharp not able to get anything done. I mean, I'm super impressed by Hero. He's just been killing it all night long. And it's uh, been a real treat to watch. Shame that Sharp couldn't find a way of now. I feel like he got too much of a gambling addiction problem there, saying, like, all these other turns. I need to, like, you know, get some psychiatric help or something. And a little sit down and talk about these lotto drop ships. Pisu, the final Protoss and really the final player standing in the way of Hero, his all kill prize and ultimate victory for Zerg. Complete, utter domination for the Zerg race this week, but it's really Hero's victory. Yeah, you gotta feel like Hero is the final boss of the evening, even though it is Bisu in the final slot. It's like uh, you're playing a campaign and you're you're playing the last level, but you're the the final reveal is that you're the final boss of the game, <laughs> and uh, it, it was that that way the entire time, and that's why you just destroyed everyone. And uh, that might be the case this evening, where Hero also douses Bisu and uh, makes him look a little bit silly while he's at it. But that might not be true. Bisu might suddenly go on a reverse all-kill hill and, and he can still pick up this all-kill prize for himself. If he gets Hero, Jadong, and action, he can pick up this 800k one and, you know, get a little bit of a screw you. Well, everything's been lined up for him pretty nicely. He is the PVC specialist. Yeah. And all he's got is Zergs in this lineup from here on in. So maybe we could see yeah, that heroes. reversal. It's possible. Yeah. I just looking at how Hero's been performing, it, it's hard to imagine that that could be the case, that that's going to happen. Right. Yeah, I mean, my, my, my heart and my head is telling me that um, Bisu will lose here probably. But I have to, as a cast, obviously, you know try and keep the hype real for the Bisu fans out there just so that they know that technically Bisu could win here but my heart <laughs> and my head are both telling me that Hero is probably going to slap him around a little bit got the drone scout going to spot this first zealot moving out and cross map you're not probably going to get too much damage with that first zealot um, Hero even though he went for 11 pool or 11 hatch excuse me Mm. Should have Lings out in time to deal with this. First cell, it's going to come down and start to hit the hatchery, it looks like. And that's okay compensation, just dealing some damage to the hatch. Lowering yeah. that overall HP. If there's two zealots there, you can start to kill the hatchery. But with just one, all you're going to be able to do is damage it. And maybe later on, he'll have an opportunity to kill that. Uh, because it will yeah. be brought down to nearly you know, half HP. Wow, the second cell is going to arrive and the Lings just popped. Can he force the cancel? Is it possible? Uh, maybe. Yeah, he might. He might. It's very tight. He actually might get the cancel. Oh, he's going to get it. Oh, he's going to get it. Oh, he's going to get it. This Dangerous. is crazy. Dangerous. This is honestly crazy. Yeah, I really like the confidence from Bisu here. And uh, let's see if um, there's going to be some compensation from Hero just doing a quick swallow up on these two Zealots. If not, this is going to be very good for Bisu, but doesn't look like he will let him get uh, behind these minerals too easily. So pretty convincing cleanup with the, the links, it seems. Yeah, not bad. Uh, you rarely see that. Uh, decision from w what we saw from Bisu there just to go after the hatchery but it works out yeah. pretty perfectly um, that's I would say even better than killing one drone is stopping the hatchery after it's Probably, been yeah. building for that long um, I would say so it slowed it down a lot it's it's slowing down the larva it's slowing down the uh, mining at the third base so I think Beast is going to be pretty happy with his spot, even though he lost those two Zealots without too much of a fight. He's got the probe in the main. He's spotting everything. Uh, he knows about this third base over at the uh, center left. And Bisu can just move with confidence from this position. Uh, he knows exactly yeah. what's coming and he can move to counter it. 
And I feel like this keeps Hero in the position of playing reactive, which is exactly what Bisu wants right now, because usually it's like the, the Protoss player is the one in the dark and is struggling to make decisions, whereas now it seems like Hero needs to be careful with how he um, decides to navigate this next minute or two going into the mid game. It's like he's really committing to catching this probe scout, but now the Zealots are going to be popping in into the third base right as the drones arrive, so now lost mining time will occur. Yeah, this is is annoying the the three zealots slipped out even though there was lings uh, in front of the natural which is always a pain like as a zerg i've had this happen so many times at least hero noticed right away that they had left and so he was able to you know pull the lings back and not get completely blindsided by this but allowing these three zealots to cross the map and now stand here in the mineral fields like slowing everything down not allowing drones to mine threatening to kill uh mm -hmm. if drones are mining it's frustrating as heck and great surround though okay that That's was a beautiful. very good move jumping on top of that zealot now he can get two to three zealots or two to three links attacking oh great move there as well he gets the surround that's hard to do but yeah. hero pulled it off beautifully yeah, really well done there from here. And uh, I, I really like the way Bisu was approaching this game. It was like he was like shaving bits of the fat off of the steak that Hero was trying to prepare. And by the time that Hero got the steak in the pan, most of the fat had already been trimmed off. So there wasn't enough like, you know, juices to infuse and sear into the steak to make it like something that's going to be scary later on. So there's not going to be as much potency in Hero's build order coming forward. I mean, he's still going to explode later on. But I think like Bisu slowed him down just enough to have some kind of level of comfort going into this mid game at least i think you're right about that it's not like hero's going to be able to feel a huge amount of hydras for you know an eight minute timing attack or something like that where he can potentially bust right. them open before storm bisu can just chill he doesn't need to worry he doesn't need to build more cannons and he doesn't need that second cannon in the natural he's gonna build one in the main just in case scourge come to uh, sit on top of his stargate but he is very comfortable in this position he's got a second gateway in the natural that's gonna be just in case there was some sort of mutalisk all in and there are three gases so that is a potential let's see if hero goes for a mutalisk transition here yeah, I would like to see maybe a consideration of Ogre Zerg from Hero. And he has got three gases online operational. Makes me think that he's, a, yeah, going to be considering that. Uh, I don't know how much he's going to commit to it. You may see just like, you know, 10 muters and a dozen or so scourge and nothing else. And then yeah, a full-on transition after that. We might see a little bit more, more of a commitment than that. Here's some cannons coming into the main and natural. So there is some minimal defenses already being set up by Bisu. He's anticipating this being an option coming out of hero and hero does like to go for these these mirror transitions um even if he's just gonna uh snipe some high templars so bisu needs to fully respect this possibility well bisu's gonna get a zealot in over at the third he sees the uh, third gas uh gonna run into the natural now he sees the mutas so he knows everything dude bisu's scouting this game has been impeccable if he's not able yeah, to win really this good. game i'm gonna be so surprised at hero just it'll just be pure finesse from hero because he's not gonna be surprised by anything yeah i mean uh, it, it, and honestly like that's really challenging to do as protoss because you really are in the dark until you've got even when you've got observers like there's not really like like guaranteed information in this matchup as a protoss player like some games you just have to swallow that you don't know and you just can't even min max your build orders but bisu's really been locked in this game and has got hero's number every junction seems like he's going to be relying on an archon and six corsairs to try and deal with the initial ogre zerg with some good target firing with that sonic shockwave can take a large clump out of those scourge out before they can even connect with the corsairs give some point defense to the the air superiority off those Corsairs for Bisu to exploit, but now both forces are split up, so now Hero can try and uh, shave off uh, a little bit of um, this army if it comes into a bad position here. He needs to be careful not to le let this Archon get caught out of position. Yeah, the Archon is uh, a little scary. It's going to force some respect out of Hero. It's not like he can just take a fourth base right now. He won't be broken, that's for sure, on the bases he's got, and he's pumping hydras though they don't have full upgrades just yet upgrades have been a little bit slow this game 
We'll lose this probe as Bisu tries to take his own third. There's the fourth over there uh, in the center left. Bisu doesn't know about that just yet, but if he did, I think he would just go for it, try to kill it. Um, the army that he's put together right now is strong enough to deal with these Mutalists for sure. This, the, the Hydras are becoming more of a problem, but again, the upgrades are a little bit slow. So they might not be ready to move just yet. Seems like BC won't find out about that though. And he's just going to focus on getting his own third base up. Yeah, it seems like the game's going to slow down a little bit here. Uh, doesn't seem like Hero wants to challenge for this third base. Seems like he just wants to macro up. He's just skirmishing and scouting right now and just checking what's what. Making sure the game state is understood as can be. Uh, needs to be careful though with these Mutalisks, nearly getting them caught out position. He has very, made a very minimal amount of Mutalisks here. He, uh, did definitely cut off uh, from making too many Scourge and Mutas, so he can now start to field a large force of Hydras. Hopefully there will not be enough Storm to counter these clumps of Hydras, he's hoping. And he'll be able to just bowl over Bisu without there being enough Storm support. It's going Maybe for the Templar. The Mewers. Oh, he can snipe the High Templar, the Mewers. Ooh, even just forcing out Storm is huge right now. He only got one kill. Oh man, that's yeah. not enough. That is it's not enough, deal. and all the Scourge. Oh, this went really bad for Hero. Dude, Pisu. He might just bowl him over. Hero has a lot of Hydras, but there's going to be like four Storms, five Storms, so many Zealots. And the Corsairs are going across the map to just start executing Overlords. Let's see how many Overlords he can kill. Uh, while this Hydra attack is coming in, it's going to be so hard for Hero to micro on both fronts. Dodging Storms is so tough while dodging the Corsairs back at home. Zealots are getting on top of a lot of this. The Storms are great. Pretty good dodges as well, but... Oh, man. This is so many Hydras. He's just pushing forward. This is insane. This is what I was worried about. I was worried about there not just being enough Storm. Like, he had, like, a few High Templars remaining, but it's just so many Hydras. You can't Storm them all, and even with a few good Hydra um, Storm dodging, like, seems like there's just going to be a, just far too many critical mass of Hydras pushing through, and now the transition into a Lurker contain could be deadly, even though the third base is already online operational. There's now not a large, not, not a large, large enough force of infantry to challenge the contain, so now the Zerg can start to set up this is another uh, ability to checkmate the Protoss without him to attack into him. The Hydras are even, just able to dance for days out on this choke point. I don't think that the High Templars can come out and save this third base even. Wow. Hero just has so much stuff. I guess that's what I've been it's doing crazy. wrong. It doesn't matter if the opponent has Storm and they can kill a ton of your Hydras. If you just have more stuff. I guess he just can win. <laughs> he just macro kills, as well yeah. as hero, okay? And then you'll be all right. Yeah, so. just macro as well as hero. Everything will be fine. Fourth base is now mining for hero, and the third is gone. Just pure zealot high templar is pushing out of the natural, and we are already in a transition to lurkers. There's plenty of lurkers out in this front, and the Dragoon transition is going to be too late. He's not going to be able to push out. Uh, the the Lurker uh, containment is too strong. He's just diving in. He lost his Observer, so he can't even clear these Lurkers, dude. Oh, Hero's going to do it. Yeah. He's done it. It is rough. I mean, killing the observers like lights out, yeah, means that the more lurkers will get into a better position. Another round of hydras will make it there in time. At the very least, your dragoon count will be reset a little bit, even if you do break out. This is the main problem. Even if he does break the contain, he won't have a critical mass of dragoons remaining after the fact. Without a critical mass of dragoons, you can't keep fighting against these hydras anymore. There's no way of securing a third. Eventually, he'll just bleed dry. He's got one more storm. No, he does not. He does not have storm. Dragoons and zealots fighting purely against hydras is a losing proposition. Look at them just pop. Oh. And hero takes it home. Bisu taps out. Wow. GG. All kill goes to hero. I mean, I, I, I thought it was going to happen. My heart was telling me that. My head was telling me that. I, I hate to say I told you so, guys, but it, Hero is just a god. What can you say? 
Like, he's just an absolute beast. I mean, you can see that from his creativity and all kinds of, like, super stellar play um, every week if he is playing in KCM. And, and every time he's going um, into a SSL, he's going deep into the tournament. He's pretty much guaranteed to be in the round of eight at the very least in those tournaments. He's absolutely insane. A monstrous player. It's crazy that he hasn't got an SSL title under his belt yet. I'm sure that's in the cards. It's got to be sometime soon. Oh, yeah, SSL round of eight. Um, I mean, how many times has he been round of four? So many times. It's so been many times. so many times, and he just hasn't been able to clear uh, to, to, to finish things off. I, I don't know what it is that's holding him back from the play that we've seen today. It's clear that he is in a dominant form, especially after that last match. Bisu, knowing everything about his play, getting an advantage early, uh, knowing exactly what's coming, but not able to counter it. And I mean, even the dive with the Mutas didn't go well. Only getting one Templar uh, and forcing out a single storm. And he was still just bowled over by the incredible macro of Hero. It's really impressive to see. I, I'm I'm kind of speechless, honestly, Shun, that Hero was able to take down Bisu in that last game. Yeah, I don't know how he even managed to macro that many Hydras. Like, it's just impressive. Because Bisu did a lot of slowdown in the early phases of the game. Like, it's not mm -hmm. like, like Hero got away with being greedy or anything. Like, Bisu really, like, you know, taxed him at every junction in the early to mid phase, right? Like, it wasn't like he made it easy for Hero, and, like, Hero just, like, like went wild and macroed on all cylinders. It's like, no, Hero, like, was, like, really taxed heavily initially, and still managed to somehow explode with that crazy amount of Hydras after the Ogres Oak. Uh, it's crazy. There's an interview over the phone. He's calling him. It's a Hero talking. Yeah, I think he's talking to Hero right now. <sighs> what do you think Hero's feeling? at this point he's feeling so good right now he's like look at me i go deep in ssl all the time boys i'm playing out of my mind i'm i'm all killing all these scrubs like it doesn't matter to me i'm living my best life and i'm gonna i'm 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 the starcraft god and i'm gonna be here for many decades to come he's, he's saying something along those lines Sam. he's probably lamenting that he he can't play like that in a an ssl or asl finals like, where's that play when I need it for the, vi <laughs> yeah. the final victory? For that championship for belt. For the championship belt. He's spit so close so many times, but he's always fallen short. It's uh, becoming kind of a meme at this point. Unfortunately, Hero, despite his name never being the, the main character in the story, he's always been a side character in the SSL. Or maybe he, maybe he's just holding back, and really, he's this. This is this is him showing us that he's a hero by letting the other guys take the championship. And really, he just he could all kill everyone if he wanted to, but he's a nice guy, you know. He's like he's like the he's like Batman. He doesn't want you to know it's Bruce Wayne, right? He like you know he wants you to just think of him as just Batman. He's just this hero guy. He shows up, but he never gets the prize. But he's like you know always giving the wins away. You know, maybe that's why he's such a nice guy. He's not the hero we deserve. He's the hero that we need. <laughs> something yeah, like that right yeah. something like that something like that it's just contributing to the story the script writers have uh painted <laughs> him into the, the corner MVP. yeah they've they've painted him yeah. as a tragic hero rather than a you know a victorious yeah. hero yeah he must sacrifice his own his own um you know his own fame and glory for the the good of mankind that's the real hero right there <laughs> maybe you're right should <laughs> Taking a look at the score screen, you guys can see clearly Zerg is in the lead enough that we will not be having a race to the final spot. Zerg has secured that final spot. Uh, so yeah. we're going to have a PVT semifinals, uh, pretty much undoubtedly. There's, there's like a super edge case. Uh, scenario where there could possibly be a tie between Protoss and Zerg, but there's no way for either right. team to su surpass. So it's not even worth mentioning. 
Yeah, it's just very, also, also very unlikely that Zerg will get zero points two weeks in a row and yeah. Protoss will get two points two weeks in a row. It's just very unlikely, but possible, but possible. But yeah, it looks like we got a shoe in for the finals for the Zerg. Now we might be just having that PVT semis and that could be a lot of fun going on. I'm happy about that, Brazil. Yeah, Zerg's just leaping ahead and I'm always happy to see a Zerg in the finals, whether it be against Protoss or Terran, it should be an excellent excellent match looking forward to that and i'm not sure what's going to happen at the end of this season shun uh, whether we're going to have a week off at the end we've we've had two weeks skipped yeah this season so i'm not sure if they're even going to take a break at the end of the season we might go straight on into uh the season one of 2025 that's that's going to be huge right. Yeah, we won't just have back-to-back -back weeks going into the new season. Just carry on the train of hype, like, right after SSL is wrapping up. Yeah, I, I don't know if uh, Christmas is big in Korea. It might be a, a pretty strong holiday because Christianity in, in uh, Korea is pretty I'm sure they try and commercially big. milk it either way. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, so there might be a week off. We'll see what happens. Um, just... A few more weeks here, guys. Polishing off this season. As the ASL is coming to a head as well. Things are getting more exciting. We really appreciate you guys continuing to, to watch and support. Make sure to go down into the comments. Check out all the links. Or into the uh, description and check out all the links we've got. Uh, the very first link is for KCM's channel. Go over there. Give him a like and a sub. Uh, really appreciate that supporting this tournament is our number one priority uh, also check out shun's channel uh, his link will be down there and support if you can through patreon thank you so much guys any last words shun nope hope you guys have a fantastic week it's always been a pleasure i'll see you guys on the next one thanks guys <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Makes an ori himra hail series. Funny, so is no dance that a bed little earth in a murf me never mixed it. It never mixed it. Hi, or if it's red, that says the girl's ever, uh, that's a member of a real now, fuck every one. There, Nikish, Dory, the poor Hamster. ああ、ちょっと聞いてて、ちょっと聞いてて、ちょっと聞いてて、ちょっと聞いてて、ちょっと聞いてて、ちょっと聞いてて、ちょっと聞いてて、ちょっと聞いてて、ちょっと聞い
이 새끼 나 다. 아무리 생각해 봐도 여기는 얘네들이 있는 거야. 이거 이거 뭔 말이죠? 아, 거래다. 이거 저 여기 있다. 사람들 왜 그러고 들어오고 들어오고 아, 다 있어. 지나 있어. 이거 내 뜻이 아니야. 이거 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 But I'm really worried. Now, how much is the next one? Now, my worker will give it up. This is a story. Oh, that's the main one. That he is now fit. Is now fit. Oh, the main one was thinking the girl. Him and this girl, Louis C. Law. Are these their careful? I'm gonna kill Mark. See, feel when him steal. Which no man in our soul will want that. They're ringing it. See, now my worker will let him call me sudden. That's next in the open mirror. And next, this vehicle and next, even the Casadillo. Hey, Miss Neo Hill, the bar. Stat. Nah. I'm in Lars Dollar, what? I need gifts here, Clive's here. Thing is, that's for Arabs, and it's that's for Arabs, and brush so we go. There's no more or any more full hype in the classes, and yeah, one night or so, girl, and my afternoon, your body can wait in the concert, you see your class, and you can't be stuck in the... Eh, but I'll come out, we'll see, but it's the caster, they're fine. See, and then there's a couple of seven. It's rushed. And that way, I'll see if they're off, so it's beat this down. It's so off, and it's not a leaf, and not a... Hey, but it's your girl. Oh, I've got your class, and my afternoon, I've not... Her girl, Louis, and then you're there, and now I'm going to be your real girl, so... Devon just got a facility between this and the other and I can get out of this time. Here, Clive, isn't this just a silly lady made of the sea? He literally just served my dirty mid. Nah. Hello, boy, I'm sure for you, too. Yeah. So, he's in the loft of the health market for the load of fire, she doesn't sit. ไอ้เฟสเซนมาวอร์ฟอนิกซ์เลยฮิลชเนฟเป็นไอ้ที่เงี้ยรู้มาวอร์ฟอนิกซ์เนี่ยเงี้ยเล่นเดี๋ยว
Taylor. Sorry. <laughs> Herschmann, <laughs> 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 